It's time for another Thursday with Tony, and today I thought I'd do a ghost story. After all, Halloween is coming up soon, and this is a time of year for ghosts and goblins. And besides, storytelling is another one of those things I do besides writing and painting and making videos. I think you're gonna like it. <laughs> This is a story of a young lady named Diane. Diane Ingram was her name. Her father was Cornelius Ingram, and he was one of the wealthiest landowners in the area. Diana's mother, and she was an only child, had died when she was very young. So she lived with her father. She looked in a mirror that day, and sure enough, the golden curls surrounding her face, so pearly white with a slight blush of red on her cheeks and sparkling blue eyes. She tensed her belt up a little tighter, smoothed down her dress and realized, sure enough, at 16 years old, she was really becoming a woman. Diana was, of course, the apple of her father's eye, who was a very, very wealthy man. And sure enough, when she came down from upstairs and came down the grand staircase there to the great room, in the plantation, were her father to be entertaining guests, they would all stop. And not a word would be spoken, but their eyes would follow Diana down the stairs. Now, it seems down here of late, Diana had taken an interest in horses. Now, of course, that was easy to understand because her father was one of the most famous horse breeders in the area. As a matter of fact, his horses seemed to always win local races. His Black Stallion Midnight was famous throughout the colony. All horse owners and the area would have loved had a colt sired by midnight. Every day, Diana would go to the stables and have the groom saddle a horse for her, and she'd ride about the plantation. On her way to the stable, she'd invariably stop by the blacksmith shop where she could hear the clang of metals, and she'd peer through the window. And hopefully she would see young Sean, young Sean O'Sullivan. He was the blacksmith's helper. Indeed, his trainee. He was learning to be a blacksmith. Sean, like many people on the plantation, were indentured servants. After he served so many years, he, he would be set free of his bondage. Uh, the master had paid his passage to the New World, and Sean would have to work so many years to pay off that passage. She looked at him, the young man, stripped to the waist, the bulging muscles, the power at which the hammer came down on the anvil, flattening out the glowing red metal the sparkle of, of the sweat beads on his body. He almost glowed, and when he shook his auburn hair, little beads of water would be illuminated by the fire of the forge in the air, and they looked like sparkles. She felt her cheeks redden and blush. Ah, but she had to go to the stable, and she continued on to the stable, but it seems that every day as she went for a ride, she would linger more and more at the blacksmith's window, looking at the young blacksmithy. Her father noticed her interest in the horses, and he was quite concerned at interest, and so one day he followed her, and he noticed that she stopped by the smithy's shop for a minute, and then she disappeared inside, and he peered through the window, and he could see his lovely daughter in the arms of the half naked Irishman. He was angry at first, but then he decided he simply must stop this, perhaps without her even knowing. So he contrived a plan. That night after dinner, he said, Diana, Diana, dear, I, I would like for you to do me a favor. Oh, yes, Father, what, what, I, what can I do? And she said, well, he said, well, you know, your Aunt Myrtle in Monk's Corner who lost her husband last year, is, 
is suddenly taken ill. I, I wonder if you could go and spend a few days with her and perhaps help her around the house. Sure, Father, I would be glad to do such a thing. And so she did. She journeyed to Monk's Corner, a mere eight or ten miles away, and but quite surprised when she got there. And it appeared her aunt was in, in good health, but she questioned not and decided that she would stay. Having been there a while, she thought over the events leading to her getting there, and she realized that she had been a victim of her father's ploy. What could she do? She had not a plan. Uh, obviously, her father loved her and meant the best for her, but then there was Sean. One night, as she was about to go to bed, she heard a knock on the door. She went to the door and opened it, and sh who should appear in the doorway but Sean himself? He said not a word, but with a nod of his head, he indicated that she should follow. She quickly grabbed the scarf off her chair and followed him out. Sure enough, there at the hitching post was midnight, her father's favorite black stallion. Sean jumped aboard the horse and reached down and grabbed him with one sweep of his arm he threw up behind him. She grabbed around his waist and held on tight as the big horse started to move out through the marshes by the rice fields on the way back to her father's plantation in Goose Creek. Ah, he was such a fast big horse and she could hear him breathing and snorting. The moon followed him through the marsh and the big horse was so fast. Surely she realized they were they were out running the shadows, but her, her arms around her shone. He felt so cold. So she took the scarf, the scarf that she had around her head, and she wrapped it around his neck to keep him warm. Soon, they were at her father's plantation, and she bound up the front steps, based the tall columns, and knocked on the door while Sean, of course, took the horse to put it away. Old Mose came to the door. Oh, he was so very, very old and moved so very, very slow. And, and sure enough, her father had obviously heard the noise and came downstairs in his robe and said, uh, Diana, uh, uh, Diana, what, what, why are you here? And she says, I thought there was something wrong with you, father. Uh, I, I was over at, at, at my aunt's and, and Sean came in and got me. And she, he said, oh, really? Come inside. Uh, you look a bit cold. Perhaps you can get warm. And she went to the giant, huge fireplace and stood for a few minutes. And you said, Sean came to get you there? Why, yes, he did, Father. We rode back on midnight. Ah, oh, what a fast horse. And he looked at her almost quizzically. And he says, uh, and I'm sorry, dear, but there, there, there's something, uh, uh, there's, there's something I have to tell you. And she, and she says, well, what, what, what is it, Father? What is it? Whatever can it be? Uh, mm, Diana, I, I don't know exactly how to tell you this, but uh, uh, two weeks ago, a couple of fortnights, uh, 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 Sean, uh, the blacksmith's helper, was uh, shoeing a horse. Uh, and, and while he was doing it, uh, the horse got spooked. And I, I don't know why, but, but the horse kicked him. Uh, right, right in the head, and um, he died instantly, dear. But father, that cannot be. I came here with Sean. I came here with him on midnight. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, dear. I'm not sure what happened, but it, it wasn't Sean. Uh, he knew that his daughter was as headstrong and as stubborn as he was, and there was only one way uh, that he could convince her that. Uh, uh, it was not shown. Um, okay, daughter, um, come with me. Uh, Mose, Mose, uh, uh, go out to the quarters and uh, get a couple of men and meet, meet us at the, the cemetery. The, the, the one behind the family, the cemetery behind the family cemetery. Yeah, it's a massa. And so they went out the door, went out to the cemetery behind the family cemetery. This is where slaves and indentured servants, non-family members were buried. Uh, okay, uh, fellas, I want you to dig up, uh, dig this up. Uh, um, dear, I'm, I'm sorry you need to see this, but it seems there's no other way. 
uh, I can prove to you uh, Sean's death. And, uh, Father, surely you're mistaken. Um, and they started digging deeper and deeper and deeper. And chum, they hit something and, oh, uh, that must be the coffin. And so they dug down and said, oh, bring it on up, bring it on up. They brought it up and, all right, open it now. <clears throat> Dear, I don't know. I don't know if you should. You should look at this. You know, and, oh, uh, it's all right, Father. It's all right. I, I want. They pried the top of the coffin off and they looked inside, and, and sure enough, inside was a young Irishman with red hair. Well, they could tell that was all was left, but the the flesh would have started uh, uh, sinking away from the bones and. It was obvious it was a body in uh, decaying and but Diana, see, I, I told you and, and she looked into the coffin and sure enough, she recognized the remains of dear Sean. But she also noticed that around his neck was a scarf that she had wrapped. <laughs> Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe and share the video with your friends. A thumbs up helps my channel grow too. Other videos are available as you can check out my playlist as well as what's coming up next.